everybody. I want to welcome you back today. Uh, we have a special treat for you. Um, but before we get started, my name is John Mann. My channel is State of Charge on YouTube. And today we have Jason Lee, and he is our guest today, and his channel is LDS Reliance. You are going to want to go online and search for him and subscribe to his channel. And uh, he has been gracious enough to give me some time today. And I'm very, very excited about getting to know him a little bit better and why his channel uh, is what it is and, and how he got it started. So without further ado, uh, let's dive right in and talk with Jason. Um, hey, Jason, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Good. I'm doing very good. I'm super excited about this uh, time together. So. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day uh, to do this, and, and maybe this is uh, one of many that we'll be able to do together. So, yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, you bet. Um, if it's all right with you, I'd like to dive in and ask a couple questions about you and, and your channel and some of the things that you're doing and where you've been and, and maybe where you're headed. Uh, I'm just now starting out on this YouTube journey and you've been around a while. And so I, I look up to you. And uh, so I hopefully I can learn from you as well. All right. All right. Let's do this. All right. Well, the first question uh, that I have for you today, Jason, is uh, when and why did you start your YouTube channel? So that's a little bit of a complicated uh, answer. So uh, let me set some background a little bit. So a lot of that has to do with my faith and my beliefs. So I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. A lot of people know us as the Mormons. And <laughs> part of the, the, the teachings that, that we are taught, and especially when I was growing up in the 80s, um, was to be prepared to um, and, and to be self-reliant. So hmm. um, a lot of people know that we're, we're, we uh, try to have one year's worth of food supply um, in our homes. And oh. so when I was, I was, so around this time, this was in about 2008 to 2010, this time of my life, I was, I was very poor, recently mm. divorced, um, mm. trying to kind of relearn who I was. And, uh, and this, this kind of DIY um, spirit kind of awakened within me. And part of it was because I had to do it myself because I didn't have money to pay anyone to do anything. <laughs> and... <laughs> And second of all, because I had, I was always taught that, you know, if you can do something yourself, you should do it. You shouldn't you should rely, it. you shouldn't take government handouts, all that kind of stuff. You need, you know, you, you should be the provider in your home, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, so that sparked a lot of DIY projects and a lot of learning and a lot of, okay, how the heck do I do this? And yeah, uh, so uh, I don't know exactly when or why I got connected with YouTube. YouTube was still very young, pretty insignificant mm -hmm. at that point. This was 2011 when I actually started the channel. Yeah, and I posted up a couple videos because I, I was learning a lot and I, I kind of wanted to share some of that with other people. At the time, most of it was prepping stuff. So I was like, trying to get my food storage in order. I lived in Oklahoma at the time, right in the middle of Tornado Alley. So I was trying to be prepared for tornadoes and sure, sure. power outages and all that. So did, um, did any of the 2008 like financial crisis kind of help spark any of that too? Is that, you know, coming out of that into 2010 and 11, was, was that have anything to play? Absolutely. So uh, around that same time, like I said, I, I, I was divorced in 2008. Um, the, the, that was mm. right when the, everything was started to crash. Yeah. So, um, you know, I kind of sold all of my assets and started my business, my computer consulting business at that time. Got and, uh, and then, and so I was, I was single, no kids, all that kind of stuff. So I had a lot of free time, you know, free because <laughs> I needed to be doing work, but right. I, I controlled my time. And there was some time, some free time in the middle of all of the things you need to do from a financial obligation to kind of allow you to do some of those DIY um, projects, right? Yeah. And so I, I did not really even have a camera at the time. I think I had a cheap <laughs> hundred dollar, you know, little. That's great. 
you know, digital camera. And, and so I took some really poor quality. If, if you want to have a laugh, go look at the, the very beginning of my channel, the very first vi videos that were very poor, but. Well, I watched, I watched your intro video and, um, you know, it helped me understand a little bit about where you were coming from. So yeah, I, you, we, we all come a long ways in this process and this journey, right? Yeah. So anyway, it's, to make a long story short, I, I started throwing a few videos up there, mostly prepping stuff. And mm -hmm. then, and then I, I met who would become my wife now. And obviously that some of that stuff went on the back burner. I was spending a lot more time with someone else. And, uh, and then we got married and getting a new household set up and all that stuff. So for a couple of years or at least a year, I didn't do a whole lot with the YouTube. And then one t one day I, I logged in Oh, and by the way, this was long before there were any guidelines about monetization. Mm -hmm. So I was monetized from day one. Day one. Like three people looked at my videos and that was it. And so <laughs> wow. about a year later, I hadn't logged in a single time. Now I log in and all of a sudden I've got 200 subscribers or something and like 3,000 views. I was like, wow, watching my crap? Why does anyone care? So anyway, it kind of fueled me to like, oh, this is kind of cool. I just made three dollars in advertising. Yeah, that um, kindled the fire then, right? Yeah, it kind of creates this treadmill, and you're like, oh, this is cool. What else can I do? And so I started putting more, more stuff into it, and then eventually I did some stuff on solar, and which went bananas, and the rest is kind of history. That's awesome. That's great. Which I, I mean, that's actually a great segue into the next question. Um, what is the biggest impact solar technology has had on, on your life? And um, talk a little bit about that for us. So solar was a little interesting because it, it to, me, to answer your question, it taught me to dig deeper into things because mm. a lot of other top things I had, I was into woodworking. I was, you know, I've been into computers and servers and stuff, networking for a long time, all that stuff. A lot of that's, I mean, you can get pretty deep into those things, but mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. With solar, there was so much more. Every time I thought I had kind of peeled back the layers, there was more underneath. Um, and what I mean by that is as I got to know com companies and uh, public figures and experts and researchers and all this stuff, there's a lot of differing opinions. There's a lot of facts that may or may not be true. There's a lot of mm. bad advice out there. And my initial results with solar was poor. I was very disappointed in what I had gotten myself into and the, the, the crappy investment that I had made. And so that I, I wanted to share that with other people like, hey, uh, I just threw away a thousand dollars here. Don't do what I did. And, yeah. and teaching people how to do it the right way, which I should learn, learn from my mistakes, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I watched one of your channel or one of your videos on your channel where you did the um, the remote ubiquity where you could do the security camera. Now, um, does that does solar tie into your consultancy a lot of times? And was that a personal project or was that kind of a work related project? That was kind of the first time that the my professional day job stuff had kind of intersected with with youtube i was working for a construction company at the time mm. and uh as their a director of it and they needed a a camera at the the gate the front gate of this yeah. facility and they didn't have any way to get power there and they were talking about trenching all the way over there and it was a big yep. mess like, dude I yep. could throw a solar panel right on that and have it up in, in two days. They're like, totally. Okay, do it. So I did, and, and I just whipped out my camera at the time. I, I didn't <laughs> use like a tripod and a, you know, a, a nice DSLR or anything. I just pulled out my my mobile phone and, and video took some videos of it, of what I was doing. Yeah. I was already getting paid to do the thing anyway, so might as well, you know, totally take, take some video to show people what I was doing. So, you know, that was the video that I first was introduced to who you were, and it it was sparked something in me that created some excitement. So, thank you for that. Um, and then 
somehow you and I haphazardly met on this uh, DIY solar forum uh, website and um, I reached out and that's kind of how this got started. So I was I was excited actually when you kind of um, reached back and said, sure, let's do that. So I was a little starstruck. So cool. um, I appreciate, appreciate that a lot. Um, so as your audience has grown and your channel has begun to uh, flourish and, and you're doing some of the things that you want to do with it, um, over the years, what is the question uh, that you get asked the most from your audience? Uh, that one, <laughs> so there's a lot of them, but the, the biggest one, probably the most common one, and the one that I try to focus a lot of my videos on eliminating is... I, I just bought X and I'm trying to power Y. How do I get this to work or why mm. won't it work? So, you know, someone buys a Harbor Freight solar panel kit and they're trying to power a sol an air conditioner or they've bought, yeah. you know, they bought a, a 10 watt, you know, solar panel and they're trying to power a hair dryer. Why won't this work? It's yeah. Like, so there's obviously with, with, with all the comments there's a lot of ignorance and that's not a bad thing. It's just people don't really know so, much about solar. And that was me, you know, yeah. they're, they're starting their learning process and their journey at the same, you know, at that moment. And so I'm trying to shorten that, that journey that they need to make to where they can make intelligent decisions about solar as much as mm -hmm. possible, because, you know, I, I hit every, every tree, every tree branch on that tree going down, you know, losing money and making all the painful mistakes. So, that's probably it is, you know, I don't really understand solar. They're not telling me this, but the question yeah. should be rephrased. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I went ahead and bought the solution to the problem before I really understood what understood the, prob the problem was, mm -hmm. and before I really understood what the solution could actually provide me. So help me out of this mess. And that's, that's kind of the question that I get. Yeah. One of the things that I learned early on and, and your channel helped me with that was making sure you understand the load how much power are you going to draw and what does your specific application require and then build from there um, i too have had a lot of um, people ask me especially when i did the video on my um so my solar sheds air conditioner i had a guy say hey can i use this to power my rv for 24 hours continuous and i was like oh well no pun intended, but that's a loaded question. Yeah. You, you got to figure out what the load is and then go from there, right? Yeah. So I get I get that kind of question all the time. It's you know they they don't. Yeah. The, we just that's live in a day and age where people want the quick answer. They don't want yeah. they don't want to do the homework themselves. They don't want to do the math. They don't want to do the mm -hmm. research. They don't want to figure that out. And that's fine, but don't expect amazing results. Solar is yeah. not a wonder technology. I just want right. everybody to understand that. It is not going to give you free unlimited energy for the rest of your life or something. There are there are pros and cons and strengths and weaknesses that you need to understand before you get started. Yeah. You know what? I think that you just answered our next question, and that was... Uh, what would you like your viewers to take away or learn based on the information that you provide? Why don't you just e expound on that a little bit? Uh, well, yeah, beyond beyond that is just, you know, it's kind of a cliche, but you really can do anything that you put your mind to. But mm. there's more to that cliche than just sheer willpower. You, you're going to need some perseverance. You're going to need some natural curiosity you're going to need some scholarship you're going to need some hmm. um you know willingness to make make mistakes and learn from them um but you can do this you know some people might look at a broken car and be like i can never figure this out but you know you can't eat an elephant in one bite either you've got to let's take sure. it apart start learning start growing start taking one bite at a time before you know it, you can do some of these these yeah. hard things that people are terrified of. That was one of the things that really intrigued me about kind of educating myself a little bit more. And I by no means am an expert in solar. I do it because I think it's fun. I do it because I think it's intriguing and and I like I like learning. 
Um, but it was just going through that process of um, understanding and learning. And then you get these aha moments and you, you're like, wow, I could actually do this. This would be really cool to do. Yeah. And as long as you're in that mindset of, hey, uh, I don't know everything, but if I just learn a little bit more, um, then I can I can do these things. And for me, that's that's kind of the fun of it. Um, I, I I don't want it to be a career or, you know, I, I don't want to put solar on my house myself. I, I just like tinkering with it. And that's where I find right. some of the joy in it. Very cool. Um, the next question for you here is, um, what's been your favorite project and why? Well, you, you mentioned that you have a solar shed as well. I, that's been my, my favorite project, probably those, mm -hmm. um, you know, I built a built a shed in my backyard, um, shortly after I moved into this house and, um, you know, built it completely from scratch myself, bought all the lumber, did all that stuff. And uh, that's other, awesome. than, other than like setting the, 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 frame up and then nailing it together that was the only time that i had any help at all on the project so um so that was that was probably the biggest and and most fun project most rewarding um yeah and then obviously it gave me the excuse and the ability to put a bunch of solar panels up on top and and play oh with yeah solar. so so it's uh you know and i've done that. a few videos on that over the years and it's I've probably changed that solar panel system five times in that time. Nice. So yeah. definitely hasn't, you know, been not been a good financial investment, but it's been fun <laughs> and it's, it's been very uh, useful to me. Yeah. Well, this has been my first uh, summer with a solar shed with air conditioning in Phoenix. Uh, this has been the hottest summer on record. There were more than 30 days consecutive of 115 degrees or higher this summer. And I learned a lot about what that solar shed can and cannot do in the summers here in Phoenix. And so, yeah, I'm going to be restructuring that a little bit this next year and figuring out a little bit more about what, what I can get from it. And um, yeah, totally, totally understand where you're coming from there. Yep. Um, so on that, this is our last question for the day. Time flies here. This has been awesome. Um, what is your next big project and will we see it featured on your channel? Um, I have I have a bunch of little ones, potential ones coming up. Um, I don't know whether I should mention them because then people are like, well, hey, when are you doing this? But um, I do want to add solar panels to my truck. Oh wow! Um, and I, I am going to revisit. I keep getting people asking me to revisit stuff about like web servers and stuff. So I'm mm. going to build a new like low power web server. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this, since it's starting, it's not really getting cold in in Texas. It's probably not getting cold in Arizona, but but it, it is in a lot of other parts of the world. So I'm trying to switch my mind over to that and start planning some videos on. Some, yeah. some cold weather things. So I want to revisit like a DIY solar heater that I did mm. a long time ago. So those are some smaller ones. The, the biggest one I have planned um, that I've wanted to do for years and just haven't had the budget. So hopefully I might, I might try to do a GoFundMe or something to help fund it because it's way out of my league. But <laughs> I want to do a video that definitively answers kind of like what you're experiencing right now with your solar shed. What does it take to actually in the real world mm -hmm. power a, a, you know, a, an air conditioner the way that you want to run it 24 seven yep. with solar, yep. no, no cutting corners. You know, I've seen, I've seen dozens of videos, like some dude, out in the in the woods in Tennessee, running his RV air conditioner on some 100 watt solar panel. No, yeah. there's more to the story there. Yeah. Um, or exactly. you know, you see you see some somebody claiming they're they're you know they're running a mini split with a thousand watts of of solar, and it's like no, that, that mathematically that doesn't work. I need I want to find, but I don't want to just do the math. I want to do like real world. Okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna install it on my house. And I'm going to run it all the time at a set point that's comfortable for me. 
and and get it to where it actually works. That's my yeah. goal. That would be that would be awesome to see because I think a lot of people would be um, educated on something like that, and it's also going to squash some of the preconceived notions, you know, that solar is this all things to all people and and stuff like that. Um, because really, calculating what that is actually going to take and then producing what is needed for that. That, that's a big undertaking. So that would be awesome if if somehow you're able to 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 do that and get support for it. And I, I'll be one of the first ones to watch that video for sure. Well, you know, and I, I get a lot of because um, I'm I'm very realistic and I'm, I plan for I'm very conservative and I plan for the worst. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to do something like this, it's not good enough for it to just run yeah. like a top on the perfect day with no clouds in the sky in the middle yep. of July, the yep. thing has to work. It just has to flat out work. Yeah. And, and what's so, going to happen in the winter when your sunlight is diminished yep. from the summer and you get a, a, a storm coming in and it lasts for two days. You know, yep. a lot of those things that, that aren't aren't taken into consideration are are huge for people to understand the importance of those things. Yeah. Even the most recently, like, you know, when I did the a new video on uh, solar powered uh, surveillance camera you mm -hmm. know and i've got this big 100 watt solar panel on there for a four watt tiny camera. little people are like yeah what are you doing that's way overkilling no oh. i just had five days of overcast and it almost ran out so yep yep um, right now um because of all the fires that are happening in california uh here the, the smoke is blowing from the west into arizona and it's been so overcast the last week uh, just from the smoke that we're seeing from California being blown in that my solar production has decreased almost 50 percent and those are just unknowns you know you don't you can't plan for something like that necessarily but you can you know prep <laughs> no pun intended yeah. for those kinds of things and be ready for those and that, that preparedness will will help you help you out yep for sure yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, Jason, um, thanks so much for spending some time with me today and and doing this. Um, uh, hopefully, this is this is one of more to come. And um, I appreciate everything that that you've done and everything that I've learned from you. So, um, yeah, I, I want to thank you again, and and we'll talk soon. I hope. All right, thanks, John. All right, man. Take care. See ya.